five, eight minutes into the third hour. Max Kaiser of MaxKaiser.com. He's got television programs on BBC, Al Jazeera, RT, being picked up for its second highly rated season. Uh, he is with us. He's normally here once a month. This is his scheduled monthly visit, but I had him on last week because of the quickening and his predictions coming true. After he was on, uh, what, last Monday, uh, breaking down the fact uh, that there was clear evidence that this was financial terrorism with a thousand-point plunge and that uh, the financial wolves uh, or hyenas, the wolf packs, were uh, bringing down Europe, the very same central banks controlled by the big brokerage firms and investment banks like J.P. Morgan, Chase, Goldman Sachs. Uh, Trichette's now saying, I need more power, and we, we need more U.S. and German money. And it's all spelled out in the headlines. Their answer to the crisis they created is more power to them enshrined in a world government. So to go over those headlines and to take your calls at 1-800-259-9231, uh, is Max Kaiser, and your calls are coming up for those that are holding. Max, good to have you back so soon. Yeah, man, great to be back with you, Alex. All right, my friend, you've got the floor for the balance of this segment. Lay out where we are, what's happening, what's going on in Europe, what's going on with Brown stepping down, Merkel in, in trouble, saying the banks are criminal, uh, what's happening in the markets, a trillion's not enough, they need more. What is happening right now? All righty, well, uh, let's talk first about Greece. Now, George uh, Papandreou, the uh, leader in Greece, he made a statement yesterday over the weekend that he's now going to investigate what role the Wall Street banks played in destabilizing his country, his economy. And this is through some back-channel uh, communication between myself and folks in Greece, and I've been trying to steer them in the right direction, telling them this isn't a market problem, it's not a market failure, but it's fraud that's been perpetrated primarily by Wall Street banks. And my message got through, and he said yesterday that he hears words like uh, a need for transparency and there's fraud, and now he's going to take a stand against the bankers. Now, historically, when anybody has taken, anyone in politics has taken a stand against the bankers, they immediately put themselves into, you know, quite a bit of danger because the track record, if you go, you know, even if you read John Perkins' book, uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman, whenever somebody, a leader of a country, steps up against the bankers, they put themselves into grave danger. Now, this would be the first time, that really, that a major Western economy is taking on the Wall Street banks. But the people in Greece are out in the streets, and the leadership is responding. So they're, he's making a statement. So we're going to see, because there's ample proof that the Wall Street banks purposefully crashed the Greece economy, the Greek economy, for short-term capital gains. So uh, that, that's, that's the first thing that's happening. What's happening in Iceland? You know, we made a film in Iceland about the collapse of the corona, the collapse of the Icelandic economy, and I've gotten pretty friendly with a lot of the legislators up in Iceland. I'm proposing to them that they introduce some a new economic citizenship so that anyone in the world who wants to escape, for example, a U.S. citizen that wants to escape the tyranny of the U.S. can buy a passport for Iceland and to make it competitive so it only costs 20000 bucks. Right now there's only two territories or countries that offer economic citizenship, Nevis, St. Kitts, and uh, Dominica. They're both uh, in, the, in, in the Bahamas. Uh, they cost 200000 and seventy-five thousand dollars, respectively. Respectively, I'm saying that Iceland, to be competitive, they can offer economic citizenship for twenty thousand dollars, and uh, they could get if they get uh, two hundred thousand or so, or half a million citizens from the U.S. to um, renounce U.S. citizenship and move to Iceland. They could raise ten billion dollars immediately to help recapitalize their country, and they are talking about uh, inter rewriting their constitution in ways that are going to favor free speech and freedom of the press. All right, let me so stop you. Who's interested in freedom of the press would immediately want to emigrate to Iceland. So Ma Max. we have these pockets of resistance and pockets of strength from the work that you're doing directly uh, and the work I've been doing, and now these people are starting to respond because the global insurrection against the banking occupation is on. Okay, the global insurrection is on. I want to interject this and, and uh, get your take on it, and, and I want to back you up here and, and have you continue uh, this is French news agency. Bankers jailed, sued as Iceland seeks culprits for crisis. Then a week ago, we saw the Merkel headline where she called, you know, it criminal banks causing this, though she's bought and paid for uh, by them. So isn't that the danger 
uh, with the Greek leader and others is that they see the headlights of the train coming, the global insurrection against the banking cartel. They know they can't survive unless they put it into a process, and then maybe Goldman Sachs or J.P. Morgan will flush down the toilet some mid-level trader you know, on a sub-issue like Timberwolf uh, with Goldman Sachs. I mean, isn't there a danger of that? Because I've been all over uh, Greek radio and um, uh, newspapers as well saying arrest the bankers, you know, arrest Goldman Sachs. And so you've been putting the pressure on. Many others have been putting the pressure on. So that's a great idea. Uh, secondarily, how you brought up Expatriates. We have the New York Times saying record numbers of wealthy people uh, who aren't globalists leaving uh, because they say this is the last year to get your money out, just fleeing in mass. I'd rather flee to somewhere like Iceland, but I don't even have enough money, I don't think. Like you said, if it was $200,000, then I think I'm going to stay here and go down with the ship. But for people that do want to escape and be about, uh, to be around like-minded people, but what about uh, the arrests that they're reporting in Iceland? That's right. Uh, one of the bankers in London, uh, who they they say, uh, and rightfully so, was responsible for uh, pilfering two billion dollars from the economy, is now uh, being prosecuted. And um, you know, it's funny because London is where a lot of these guys go uh, to get because the the hedge fund industry and the banking industry laws are very lenient there, and you end up with a lot of the international banking crooks end up in London, which is one of the reasons why the real estate market in London uh, on the high end, the very expensive. Uh, residencies hasn't uh, crashed so much because they're supported by all these uh, billionaires from these uh, territories that they've uh, absconded with all the wealth. So Iceland is actively going after uh, this guy. And it's funny because in the indictment, they use a very interesting word, Alex. They use the word counterfeiting. Now, this is fascinating because counterfeiting in the context of financial crime and financial terrorism it points to what what's, what what um, people know as naked short selling. Naked short selling is the, is really one of the most common incendiary financial devices used to blow up an economy and to blow up a, a country to blow up a, a, a company. We saw with Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns. Naked short selling. You're selling something. You're selling a security that doesn't exist which is the same as counterfeiting. So now if they bring this whole naked short selling scam to the surface and they call it what it is, counterfeiting, that, that would point the finger at a lot of the uh, criminality that's gone on in the last five to ten years and really bring, bring in all the banks because they're all guilty of this naked short selling to a huge degree. Now getting back to your question about, well, the leaders, once they take on Wall Street, are they going to be pressured to back down? And uh, what we saw last Thursday on May 6th, was the first unequivocal domestic financial terrorist attack in America. You know, there was a bill in Washington to break up the big banks. They dropped the market by a 1,000 points. Uh, the lawmakers pulled away. They decided not to pass that law to break up the big they banks. They also dropped the real law at the Fed and put a fake one in, according to Ron Paul. Yeah, so they've got this weapon, which is they can crash a market. And I'm looking at today's news. And you see now that the financial terrorists are not shy about threatening to blow up people's economies and markets. For example, if this is in today's news. Morgan Stanley said that um, if Europe doesn't engage in, in um, full-blown quantitative easing, which means that they uh, would buy back their own, their own bonds, which basically would mean to destroy the euro, then Morgan Stanley threatens Europe with a 1987 crash. Look this up. Morgan Stanley, full-blown quantitative easing may be needed to save Europe, or else we'll see a 1987-style crash. So they're threatening Europe with a 1987 crash. That's Morgan Stanley. A Wall Street bank is threatening the entire Eurozone. 